Thank you very much. Introduction. Um, thank you very much, uh, Stefano. Thank you very much, Anastasia, for the kind invitation in Wien. Um, it is my second um, period in the Schrodinger Institute, and uh, we met together the, in the second time. Yeah, and okay. Um, today I want to present uh, my joint work with uh, Dorothy Knies from University of Kassel and Andreas Schrodinger from University of Salzburg and in concerns fully discrete approximations here for radially tangent to crack evolution. Okay, um, yeah, of course the fracture problem is uh, well known for um, many centuries and uh, continue to attract um, scientific interest uh, owing to the complex phenomena uh, which involved and complex nature of this phenomena. And um, I try to uh, present um, my work uh, as simply as possible, and sometimes you can find that uh, not all of the condition uh, which you can find on the slides um, are sharp. But okay, but we start in any city. Okay, uh, I start with formulation the equilibrium problem. Uh, what we consider, we consider uh, some uh, specimen or. Uh, mathematically speaking, a bounded domain in A2, uh, which is filled by an elastic material. And uh, we fix two geometry uh, such that it's just a rectangle of length L and height 2. And, uh, but in principle, it, was, it, it may be some uh, Lipschitz domain. Such that, the such that the crack uh, meets the boundary um, in order to, uh, in order to uh, all of the domain uh, are Lipschitz. Okay, and uh, we consider the crack which lies uh, on the interface. I saw that it's not really interface, but uh, on the line on the axis x1, and the crack is the sum set which is. Uh, can be described as a closed interval uh, zero z, and uh, that, of course, describes the length of this connected interval. And uh, we assume that the crack pass is prescribed in advance, uh, and this means that the crack can propagate uh, just from this one point in the in the right direction. Okay, and uh, we fix during the talk some. Uh, minimum uh, crack lens, uh, because uh, all of the questions uh, we concerned just uh, crack propagation and not nucleation of the crack. Okay, and um, okay, uh, we assume that uh, our material mm, modeling in the setting of small strain elasticity, this means that uh, we define two components displacement field in the crack domain omega z and uh, uh, introduce the tensor of uh, small strain tensor yeah, and the material uh, is supposed to be isotropic and homogeneous such that the uh, tensor of elasticity is just a constant tensor which is positive defined and uh, Obeys the minor and major uh, symmetric relationships. Okay, we consider uh, the cone of admissible displacement, uh, which is in the Sobolev space H1. Uh, we look for the displacement fins there, and uh, we assume that uh, that the jump that the jump across to the crack is uh, non-negative. This means that uh, we forbid uh, the non-penetration of the material, and uh, this local, the so-called no local non-penetration condition can be considered as a linearization of Cirilla Nash's condition. Um, okay, uh, our body is uh, supposed to be uh, loading such that uh, we have uh, three sides with uh, Neumann condition, and uh, one of them with the Dirichlet part of the boundary where the uh, zero displacement is prescribed. Uh, yeah, as I said, in order to simplify the exposition, I just, uh, I just fixed uh, 
this geometry and uh, the boundary condition. Okay, and uh, the problem uh, which we're interested in uh, at every moment of the time can be formulated uh, as a variational problem. Uh, we introduce the potential deformation energy, which is the sum of uh, two terms. It's a stored energy and the uh, work of the external forces, and uh, we assume that the uh, that the traction is uh, continuously differentiable with respect to time. Okay, since uh, this deformation energy, potential deformation energy is strictly convex uh, uh, and continuous, we can minimize over the set of uh, admissible deformation fields and find a unique minimizer. Uh, and this unique minimizer, of course, satisfies the variation of inequality and uh, conversely, uh, since the functional is uh, convex, that the unique uh, solution of this inequality satisfies the minimization problem. Okay. Uh, after that, we can, we can calculate the reduced energy, which is just a minimum value of the energy with respect to our cone. And uh, in order to give some more explanation about the um, physical problem which we are interested in, uh, I give you a, a strong formulation of the problem that it's uh, the first line is, of course, the equilibrium equation in our correct domain. Uh, the body is fixed here, the Neumann condition, and uh, th these two lines describe um, the complementarity condition, which fulfilled uh, on the correct basis. Uh, this one is something like uh, uh, a problem with an unknown boundary or free boundary problem. Uh, what this means that if we have here the strict inequality, then the normal stresses uh, are equal to zero on the correct basis. And uh, conversely, if uh, some, if the uh, normal stress is, uh, is negative, then this means that track faces are in contact with each other. Okay, and uh, this was uh, just an equilibrium problem, what this mean, and uh, yeah, and but our interest it is a track propagation problem, and uh, in order to describe this topic, uh, we follow the a seminal work of Griffiths, uh, uh, in which uh, he formulated um, the thermodynamical balance, uh, which describe a brittle crack propagation, uh, and which is, of course, formulated as a competition between two terms. The terms, one of them is a potential energy, uh, which releases during the crack propagation and another one, the energy which is needed to create uh, a new free surface. And uh, in other words, or more precisely, th this criterion can be formulated such that, that the crack propagates spontaneously only when the energy least rate is greater than or equal to the fracture toughness. We have here uh, key ingredient of the uh, criterion. One of them is the energy release rate fracture toughness, and I need to describe what this means, that energy release rate uh, is just the uh, op opposite of the right derivative uh, of the reduced energy with respect to the crack prolongation. Of course, uh, this definition doesn't uh, ensure the existence of the energy release rate, but, but uh, nowadays it's not a problem. Uh, yeah, okay, that, uh, of course, uh, one can prove that the reduced energy is continuously differentiable with respect to the time and with respect to the position of the crack, and uh, it can be calculated uh, by using Griffith's formula, and here uh, the first term in the integral is the so-called special B tensor. And, um, but it's not just uh, continuously differentiable and Moreover, it's uh, locally leech, it's continuous on the time, with respect to time and with respect to space. Okay, and the second ingredient 
of the Griffiths theory is a fracture toughness, is just uh, some constant in isotropic and homogeneous case, uh, which describes the intrinsic ability of the material to resist brittle crack propagation. And in order to capture this mathematically, we introduce this so the so-called di dissipation functional, which is uh, speaking in the language of rate independent system is state dependent. Yeah, but, and uh, we have here two lines. The first one says that the amount of the energy uh, uh, is uh, just proportional to our kappa fracture toughness. And uh, the second one uh, forbids the uh, healing of the crack because we consider just irreversible process. Okay, and uh, mathematically, uh, this Griffith fracture criterion can be formulated just formally uh, as uh, uh, three conditions. One of them, irreversibility, local stability, and complementarity conditions. Yeah, and uh, if we try to uh, try to describe in this one is with the help of the uh, differential inclusion, then we obtain some Dublin nonlinear uh, differential inclusion, which is of course uh, rate independent uh, because our dissipation functional is uh, is a convex uh, lower semi continuity and uh, uh, positively homogeneous of degree one. Okay, and uh, the problem is to uh, how to describe the solution of this uh, differential inclusion uh, because it's intrinsic to rate independent system uh, that the solution uh, even for uh, even for continuous and uh, differentially continuous uh, load has a discontinuity. Okay, and um, lately, um, much attention paid for uh, paid for the solution which based on local minimizer. What this mean? Okay, and uh, in order to obtain the solution which uh, staying in local minimizer. Uh, one can use uh, viscosity regularization of the system and consider some uh, in local stability condition and complementarity condition, for example, uh, some uh, some terms which contain uh, viscosity, a, a given uh, positive parameter, and one can prove that uh, that. A family of solution which generates by this uh, viscosity system uh, contains some uh, weekly star in BV uh, convergence sequences such that uh, the limit function uh, such that the limit function uh, is the solution of uh, BV solution of the crack evolution model and yeah I just I just to show you the, this definition, but not a comment. Okay, but uh, another way uh, in order to obtain uh, this type of solution uh, can be described as follow. We can start, uh, of course, with some uh, time incremental scheme. Uh, this discrete scheme Obtain, uh, contains the reduced energy plus um, plus some dissipation, which has a superlinear growth, for example, quadratically growth with respect to the second variable. And then, uh, then uh, one can define a suitable affine interpolance and prove that uh, under this condition, when a a time step goes to zero, viscosity goes to zero, if the ratio goes to zero, then this interpolance uh, converge uh, in the sense of um, in the sense of weekly star convergence in BV uh, to the solution of the continuous problem. 
Okay, and what we can see here, uh, we can see that uh, in order to prove the existence of solution, uh, you need to couple uh, your time step with the viscosity. And for example, if you want to uh, calculate this problem and implement it, it's then we need to choose uh, this ratio in a right way such that uh, the right behavior of uh, our continuous system uh, is visible for uh, course discretizations. Okay, and uh, this was uh, an approach uh, which is just a time discretization and uh, in order to add uh, the special discretization I need to introduce uh, some more definitions. Uh, okay, we have uh, two additional discrete uh, discrete level. One of them is uh, just uh, some family of clothes, the end family of clothes of space of Sobolev space. This means that it's something like finite element discretization for the displacement field. And uh, we can uh, we can describe, we can uh, here describe the set of a discrete set of admissible displacements that it's in complete analogy with the continuous case and uh, obtain the discrete reduced energy. And the second level of discretization is the okay, the set of admissible discrete correct lengths. It's a, a discretization where our uh, correct tips can be okay, but uh, and uh, in order to prove some about the convergence, we need a compatibility condition between these two discrete level. Uh, and this compatibility condition says that uh, we can approximate uh, uniformly, locally uniformly, uh, our energy release continuous energy release rate uh, by you in the point of the where the discrete crack lens uh, leave uh, by using some special different quotients which is generated by the discrete reduced energy. Okay, and uh, how one can uh, check this condition? Uh, the sufficient condition uh, which can be formulated uh, reads as follows that uh, of course, it's just something like uh, something like uh, error estimate for finite elements method, uh, and they say that uh, there exist some sequences and two constant uh, such that uh, if you compute the minimizer of the continuous energy uh, at the point uh, at the point where the discrete uh, then we can approximate it by using the fully discrete uh, the fully discrete elements uh, with the following rates in the norm of H1 and in the norm of L2. And uh, after that, uh, using some uh, using the uh, high regularity result uh, in best of spaces, uh, one can prove that uh, our conditions, compatibility conditions, is satisfied uh, because uh, the right hand side, uh, uh, the right hand side is in fact it's some combination of the discrete uh, crack lens and this parameter H n, which is uh, will be. A mesh size, and how to guarantee that uh, the right hand size tends uniformly to zero? Uh, yeah, in our for example, in our experiment, we're using some bilinear uh, quadri quadrilateral elements, and uh, as this uh, as this uh, elements uh, just a Lagrangian interpolation, and by using best of regularity, one can prove that the this parameter alpha and beta uh, can be chosen su such that uh, alpha is one half minus gamma and beta is uh, just alpha plus one. And then uh, the, right, the right hand side uh, behaves like uh, sigma n plus some combination of the 
uh, length, discrete length of the crack plus uh, multiplied by the power of uh, mesh size. And uh, in order to guarantee that uh, this one goes to zero uniformly, we need to, uh, okay, to tend to zero the, this one and this one terms. Okay, and the fully discrete analog, uh, which was uh, imposed in the work by Dorothy Knis and Andreas Schroeder, uh, yeah, says that, uh, yeah, if we replace here the energy by reduced energy and consider instead of the uh, continuous crack propagation space is the space of discrete uh, crack length, then we can obtain of course, some uh, minimizer uh, and uh, by constructed some suitable affinity turbulence, uh, the theorem which guarantees the convergence of this interpolant in the sense of uh, weekly star uh, sec sequences in BV uh, is as follow. And uh, okay, we can see that. Uh, what we have. We need uh, that all of the pa discrete parameter goes to zero. This one is the same condition as in the continuous level. And uh, we have uh, two more conditions, one of them in order to guarantee uh, the compatibility condition and uh, the condition which involves all of the discrete parameter uh, without mesh size. Okay. And uh, Okay, and consider the following uh, example, which I uh, describe in all of the detail later. Uh, if we uh, apply it to the uh, uh, to the this side and this side uh, of the our specimen, uh, the loading such that uh, here it's uh, it's some tension, compression, and uh, one more tension uh, part. Uh, then, uh, then uh, simulating and using uh, and choosing the parameters such that all of the conditions satisfied, uh, one can see that uh, the crack, uh, the, yeah, the uh, here the uh, the growth of the crack with respect to the time, and the problem is that. Uh, we need to couple in the right way uh, all of this parameter in order to uh, in order to see the convergence to the right jump. And uh, the problem is that for the uh, force discretization uh, in mesh discretization, we cannot guarantee for uh, for all of the parameters that that. Uh, if this value goes to zero, then uh, the approximate curve converge to the uh, to the right uh, jumps. Okay, and uh, yeah, but uh, the reason is that that we use uh, some viscous lyrical size here. Okay, and uh, then uh, we can formulate the goal. Yeah, that. To study instead of uh, the scouse regularized system at some inviscid fully discrete approximation scheme, which is also based are also based on uh, local minimizer. Okay, and uh, to do this, uh, we use instead of uh, approach which is uh, based on the pure BV solution, we use some reparameterization. Uh, on the artificial time interval, the so-called parameterized BV solution, and um, instead of consider uh, the uh, value of Z, uh, we extend uh, our space and consider the pair of uh, time and Z, and reparameterize our interval. And uh, we say that the uh, pair of this Lipschitz continuous function is a solution, parameterized BV solution to the our continuous uh, evolution crack model if the following three conditions are satisfied. The first one is just uh, some types of arc length reparameterization of interval. The second one is a local stability condition, which can be also rewrite as a 
as a energy release rate uh, is less or equal to fracture toughness. And the third one is the energy dissipation balance. And we can see here that, um, that the total energy at time t, which is the sum of the uh, two first ter terms, uh, is balanced with the initial value of the energy and the work of the external forces. And here we have uh, another uh, term, which is a dissipation, uh, which can come to play just uh, on the interval uh, where, where t, pri t prime is equal to zero. This means that the external time uh, is frozen and Okay, and uh, so in another word, uh, this parameterized BV solution uh, can be demonstrated uh, three regimes, different regimes. One of them is sticking uh, when it's, uh, t, t prime is equal to one and uh, the crack doesn't propagate. The second one is the rate independent sliding. And uh, the first, the third one is a viscose jump uh, when the evolution may switch to a regime that is seen as a jump in a, our external time scale. Okay, and uh, okay, and uh, what we use? We used uh, in order to state uh, our fully discrete scheme. We use the alternative approach to. Uh, Instead of vanishing viscosity, we use uh, original FND if milky scheme, uh, which can be formulated as follow. Uh, it's a, uh, that, yeah, if you consider the indicator function uh, of the interval, uh, zero rho n in the sense of the convex analysis, uh, then we need to minimize the total energy. Uh, such that uh, the minimizer which we are uh, looking for uh, is just uh, on the distance at most uh, rho n on the previous minimizer. And uh, this scheme is time adaptive. Uh, and this means that uh, we choose the next uh, time step uh, by using the following rules. Okay. And uh, what we can prove that, um, of course, uh, the first that uh, after finite number of steps, the algorithm terminates, then we reach the final time t, and um, by defining the suitable uh, affine interpolants on the data, tn and zn, tn and zn, uh, we can prove the following theorems. Of course, uh, we assume that uh, at first that uh, our compatibility assumption, because it's uh, some separate uh, of the uh, discrete level, and uh, assume that uh, our locality parameter, rho n, which says um, how far our uh, new crack uh, tip from the previous one, we assume that it's proportional to the Greg lens. It means that uh, we can just find uh, the minimizers, uh, the next minimizers, uh, just in the set of discrete lens. That uh, suppose that uh, these two parameter goes to zero. This means that Greg uh, lens, discrete Greg lens, and locality parameter. Then we can uh, find uh, some. <coughs> weakly convergence uh, in this sense that uh, sequence that in with respect to T and Z, it's a weekly convergence uh, with the Lipschitz function space, and for S is just uh, on the lens of reparameterization interval, just a convergence of the real numbers. And uh, the limit pi is parameterized BV solution to the crack evolution model. Moreover, uh, every accumulation point, uh, which is accumulation point in the, this sense is, uh, this uh, parameterized solution to the crack evolution model. And, uh, okay, and what we can see here in some uh, specific case, uh, if you just can uh, optimize our crack lens by uh, one step, this means that uh, 
we can just uh, compare the compare the energy in the in the current state in the uh, next stage then then uh, one can see that uh, there is there are only two possibilities the first one uh, if the new minimizer is uh, is uh, just uh, is just a sum of uh, previous minimizer and new correct lens yeah then uh, then correct propagates yeah but time is frozen and another one that uh, if the minimizer uh, is the same as in the current stage, then the crack uh, doesn't propagate. Uh, this one, uh, this uh, zigzag algorithm, uh, is, the, uh, is the previous one which engineer use. It's uh, uh, too independently, uh, uh, too independently mechanical. Uh, one of them is uh, Jörn Mosler from uh, TU Dortmund, and another one is um, um, Andreas Rico from the University of Kassel says that it's, uh, this algorithm uh, is uh, what engineer really do. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyone can say oh, why it's work. Okay. And uh, the second one scheme uh, which I want to present you is just uh, some uh, regularized uh, variant of the first one. Uh, if, yeah, here we have some, uh, some constraint which is non-smooth, and uh, if you try to smoothness this constraint by using, for example, uh, Moro Yoshida uh, regularization, uh, then we obtain a new scheme that it's uh, look like the previous one, but with some modification. And uh, you can say to me that, uh, okay, you use some uh, regularization. This means that it's uh, also some discourse regularization, yeah? Okay, but, um, and the theorem which we can prove here says that, um, yeah, uh, if you choose the parameter such that all of them goes to zero, and additionally, uh, the ratio of the correct lens to the uh, Moroyo Shida approximation parameter goes to zero, then uh, the result uh, is the same as in the previous theorem. Yeah, and uh, but uh, if you consider here instead the case when we have the proportional of the locality parameter and the crack lens, as in the previous theorem, uh, then we can say that uh, it's enough uh, only to require that uh, all of the parameters separately tends to zero and not this ratio. Okay, and um, yeah, <laughs> some numerical results, it's a, uh, some pictures uh, which demonstrate the ability of our algorithm to work. Uh, here you can find uh, all of the information about the parameter and we use, uh, we use plane strain approximation and uh, some engineering constant, uh, which is Young models and for some ratio instead of the LMA constant and consider the monotone with respect to time uh, uh, tractions. And uh, because we neglected uh, the volume forces, our energy can be scaled uh, with a squared with respect to time. And uh, yeah, as I said uh, some time ago, that uh, the situation is the following. Uh, here on the interval from zero to two, we have tension forces, symmetrical tension forces. After that, uh, some interval from two to four, uh, where the compression forces acted. And uh, the third one is uh, from four to five, where also some, uh, some tension is applied by, but uh, with a larger magnitude. Okay, and uh, the, the first graphic uh, said that uh, here you can see the uh, dashed line is just the energy, uh, which of course is uh, non-convex. 
Yeah, and the second uh, curve is a energy release rate, which is calculated. And uh, we want to uh, compare our BV solution uh, with a global solution. I cannot, uh, I didn't concern uh, global energetic solution uh, in my talk, but uh, uh, if we go to the slide with the viscous regularization system and uh, say that uh, the viscous is equal to zero, then uh, we obtain the global energetic solution. And what we can see here that, um, yeah, that is, as uh, uh, was mentioned in uh, many work, that uh, the global energetic solution uh, is uh, not satisfactory from the standpoint of thermodynamics and the crack uh, grows as soon as possible. And uh, uh, I recall that we have here some compressed region, but uh, the crack propagate through the compressed region. And but uh, the BV solution, uh, yeah, with respect to the scheme, approximation scheme for BV solution, the crack propagates uh, as late as possible. Yeah, it's a good thing. And uh, okay, and uh, some more graphics about the behavior of this uh, BV solution we generate by the FND Milky approach. Uh, okay, uh, here we need uh, here we need to say how to crack increment uh, is related to the mesh size, and uh, I suppose that it's proportional, yeah, with some constant. But uh, and uh, at first step, I just say that it's uh, that the crack length is just uh, a one mesh size, yeah. And what we can see here that uh, uh, if we increase, if we increase uh, the value of n, uh, which control uh, the amount of uh, mesh, then uh, approximate solution converge to some uh, to some some curves, which is BV solution, maybe, yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but uh, in the situation, mm, yeah, and the situation is the best in the first picture, where we use just uh, one step as an engineering approach, uh, yeah, but uh, if you use uh, if you use uh, more possibilities to crack propagate uh, in our ball then um, yeah, we cannot observe the good uh, ap approximation properties of the algorithm. And this also concerns the case uh, if we fix n, for example, uh, then uh, in, uh, every in every picture, then uh, the curve converge from right to left. And we also cannot uh, guarantee convergence to the uh, right crack jump. Okay, and uh, but uh, I need to say that uh, this choice of the parameter when the crack length is just a uh, mesh size uh, is an operate in uh, in uh, our theoretical finding because uh, if we go to some slide then we need to couple uh, sigma and hn. But uh, if we just say that sigma is hn, then uh, this right-hand side uh, doesn't go to zero. This is a problem. And <laughs> But uh, from our theoretical finding, uh, uh, at least uh, what we can to prove is that, uh, that this parameter m uh, must be something like this uh, in optimal may, but uh, then uh, we cannot observe here the convergence to the right jump. Okay, and uh, yeah, and uh, this one uh, is a slide which demonstrates uh, what happens uh, if we applied uh, the regularized algorithm 
uh, the situation is completely the same. Uh, but sometimes, if the uh, we, uh, we use uh, coarse discretization with respect to the finite element or a large number of uh, Jn, then uh, we can see some artificial uh, second jump, which is not appropriate for uh, our experiments. Okay, we, uh, this is some references, it's just uh, some which uh, I use uh, in this talk, and you can find some abbreviation on the previous slide, and uh, that's all what I want to say. Thank you very much.